Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you. Thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Bushmills line of age dated Irish single malt whiskeys. That's right, the Bushmills 10 year old, the Bushmills 16 year old, and their rare 21 year old Bushmills right here. Of course, when you say single malt, a lot of times people immediately associate that to Scotch whiskeys, but all single malt means is single distillery, that every drop of that distillate came from that distillery. And that's what we have here, Irish single malts, just like we can have Japanese single malts and stuff like that. Uh, but the Bushmills line is age dated 10 years old for this one. Retail price on the 10 year olds about $40, $45 right there. Uh, then we're going to take a look at the 16 year old. 16 year old retails for about $100. And finally, the rare 21-year-old Bushmills, which retails around $250. Now, while each and every one of these um, are different, and they're all finished, especially these two are finished differently, because this one is pretty much just straight up ex Oloroso and ex bourbon barrels uh, blended together. And as you can tell by that color, it's probably majority ex bourbon barrels. Uh, but there's really no, um, you know marrying and going into another cask for this one that's why it's only 40 45 dollars uh, but then when you start getting into the 16 year old you know you're looking at um, a whiskey that spent 16 years in ex bourbon barrels 16 years in oloroso sherry casks and then they take those two whiskeys vat them together and then put them into a port cask uh, to marry for about anywhere between 6 and 14 months for the Bushmills 16 year old. So that's quite the maturation process for it, hence $100. Now the rare 21 year old Bushmills, <laughs> they, they call it rare for a reason. And that is because they only fill about 27 uh, Madeira casks every year with this whiskey. And so what, what they do here is very similar here. They take 21 year old ex bourbon barrel matured 21 year old Oloroso matured, matured Bushmills, vat them together, marry them, put them into Madeira casks, and every year they only fill 27 casks. Um, then they have to mature, I mean, they have to keep maturing, keep finishing in that Madeira cask for at least two years, sometimes two and a half years before they feel like it's ready. Now that's a key thing because just like everything else, if they don't feel like it's ready, they're not going to bottle it. And the word is, is that there's been years when they checked those Madeira casks that something just didn't go right. And something was either, you know, something tainted with the Madeira, something happened, and it just wasn't hitting the right flavor profiles for them. So they end up just selling that whiskey off to, you know, somebody else, independent bottlers, something like that. Uh, but they don't use it. So in those cases, they say that they've only had, on the rough years when they don't, um, have enough there'll be about 9,000 bottles going out globally that's on a bad year on a good year when a lot of those casks are still good and they didn't have a problem up to about 34,000 bottles so that's quite a wide range of uh, what could possibly re be released every year of this one uh, but that just goes to show you that if it's not hitting their quality uh, point then it's not going to get bottled all right now let's go ahead and get to the nosing and tasting on these. Starting back with the Bushmills 10 year old. Um, one thing before we continue that I also want to talk about is that these are all 100% malted barley. Now, a lot of Irish whiskeys use malted and unmalted. These are all 100% malted barley uh, being used. Copper pot distillations. Of course this is Irish whiskey so they're going to do the triple distillation. So when it came to the 10 year old he always talked about how it was going to create a light and fruity almost floral uh, product and that was what they were setting out to do. Now he also talked about and I thought was kind of cool was that when they're filling barrels um, they're not filling a barrel to go into the 21 year old eventually or the 16 year old or even the 10 year old. They're just filling the barrels in the ex bourbon barrels, filling the barrels in the ex sherry casks and they're just going to let them roll and when they feel like they're you know, if we need a, a 10 year old, then they go pull some 10s and they work the blend. If they keep maturing, they'll age them up to 16, age them up to 21 uh, before being, again, vatted and married into the different finishing casts. So I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, but here, let's get on this one. 10 year old Bushmills on the nose. Oh, that's nice. Coat that glass. All right. Wow. 
This one has a little bit of caramel, a little caramel, honey, and malt. It's almost, it's orchard fruits on the nose. I would call this one a combination of golden apples, a little golden raisin, a little cinnamon. Yeah, a little, there's a little prickle. I would almost call it a little bit, maybe even white pepper on the nose. The apples, now the more I'm smelling it, the more I'm getting a little bit of a baked apple sensation on the nose. And there is some, some red fruit, some, some dried, little dried fruits, red berries. There's a little bit of that in there. And a little floralness there is, but it's not like, it's not perfumey. I would not call this perfumey. This one actually focuses much more on the fruit. And then when you dig down deep, you can get a little bit of the, the floralness on the back. And of course, I do pick up the Bushmills profile, which to me is this barrel char smoke. So not smoke like Isla whiskeys or medicinal, like, you know, we think the Scottish Isla whiskeys with other peat. You know, that smoke is going to be ashy, creosote, you know, medicinal. It's going to be rough. This one's more like barrel char. But let's taste it. Wow, good medium viscosity. Oh, it's nice. Okay. Yeah, that honey and malt. A little bit of caramel comes through right away. Starts dropping right on the mid palate. You start getting this big, what do I call that? Just tobacco leaf. Tobacco leaf. Uh, older leather element on the mid palate which is kind of crazy i usually expect those to come on the finish especially in the american whiskey category that's always going to come late uh, but here we are entering with that sweet caramel a uh, little bit of that baked apple type situation and then right when you start getting to the mid palate where you're expecting the spice to swell you do get a little warming of the cinnamon and a little white pepper sprinkled on top but you start getting this big dive of the tobacco a big dive of that barrel char that leather tone yeah wow and then of course you get a little hint of floralness just wisping in there on that back end but i will say that it kind of finishes real nice and clean a little dry clean and dry almost as if you didn't have anything to drink right there and it kind of entices you to go back in for another little sip here. Let's see, make sure we didn't miss anything uh, to research. Oh yeah. Yeah, it enters that honey malt, baked apples, little wisp of red berries, and then you get that cinnamon white pepper it starts diving there's that already diving with that leather that tobacco hits the bottom kind of rolls out a little bit of that barrel charge kind of smokiness but it's very very subtle i don't even like saying smokiness because it, it implies that you know you're going to be picking this up to me it implies kind of too much it's just barrel we'll just call it barrel char Wow, and a little bit of the, yeah, that apples and those golden raisins, those kind of things. I'm still kind of chewing on those on the finish. It almost has like a real subtle dryness to it, almost like a, like a really nice white wine wood on the finish. Just kind of what that feels like. It's pretty unique in that sense. All right. Next up. The 16-year-old Bushmills. Of course, this is taking 16-year-old ex-bourbon barrels, 16-year-old Oloroso matured Bushmills, combining it for anywhere between 6 and 14 months in port casks. All right, here we go. Boom. Yep. 
Oh, that's nice. Okay, medium, a little above medium viscosity. Inners, little brown sugar. Again, with the honey and malt characteristic. But the, 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 the sweet factor feels like it's a little uh, burnt, like caramelized, so you're getting more into the brown sugar tones. Starts diving down, lots of dried fruits on this one. Figs, sweet dates. Um, I would call it a little bit of golden raisin in there. Baked apples covered with caramel. Wow, a little cinnamon sprinkled on top. No white pepper here. Wow, almost, and when the leather and tobacco come in on this one, they feel much more refined, more elegant, because I'm almost feeling like this one's like, um, almost like a really nice, rich pipe tobacco. Um, combining, you start getting that barrel char, kind of influencing, driving things downward, in with all those rich, dried fruits you start getting this roasted nuttiness tribute that to let's say it's not really complex i'm gonna call it almonds just like a sweet almonds on that finish chewing on dried fruits on the back end maybe a little cocoa a little cocoa powder in there as well let's try that one more time Oh, yeah. Yeah, baked apples. Caramel covered. Mm hmm And then you get those dried fruits. Ooh. A little cocoa, yep. And it's just a little cinnamon warmth on the mid-palate. It doesn't get hot or anything like that. It's, it just warms up just for a second, and then it kind of just starts going into that deep finish. Again, sweet pipe tobacco. Aromatic pipe tobacco is what I'm talking about there. And the leather, oh, lots of leather on the finish. And it finishes, again, it feels kind of dry on the finish, but not quite as dry as this one. This one still has a lot going on with the chewiness of the fruits. Yeah, much long, longer finish for the 16-year-old. Mm. It's very, very good. Very solid. Now to the 21 year old Bushmills. Oh my goodness. You know what? I think that's what that was. Huh. Yeah, there's, it's in there. But it's much more pronounced here. That's what kind of was like triggering my senses was this one has a little bit of a pear essence going on. Pear and a little apricot, almost like, so the, the dried fruit tone that I was getting here was sweet dates and figs, but there was something else and I was attributing it to baked apples. Well, I'll go with baked apples, but you better put in a little bit of dried apricot, dried peaches in with that. And a little hint of pear. A hint of pear on this one. Over here, a lot of pear. ton of pear. The apricot feels a little fresher over here. A little bit of fresh sweet peaches going on. There's so much complexity to the fruit here, the, the vibrancy of the fruits, that it almost is leaning tropical. You know, anytime you get those uh, matured Irish whiskeys, like when you look at uh, maybe Redbreast 21, for example, that I reviewed before. That one, just a boatload of tropical fruit. This one's heading in that direction, but I wouldn't call this one, you know, papaya, anything like that. Not yet. They pulled this one bef just before it got to that point. Yeah, this one's just pears, apricots, sweet peaches. Uh, but there are figs, sweet dates in there as well. A little, a little baking spices. I'm going to call this one baking spices because I'm not like pulling out a lot of cinnamon sharpness out of it. But I can know some spices in the air. We're going to go baking spices. Old leather. And again, a little bit of that aromatic pipe tobacco. To me, this one does nose like a really 
If you like fine cognacs, then you're probably going to be right in tune with this one. It has that great nose. Okay, let's taste it. Yeah. Wow. Medium viscosity. Medium high viscosity. Wow. Okay. Caramel, brown sugar, a little bit of molasses in there for the sweetener. Um, again, pears, apricots, peaches, sweet dates, figs, the baking spice is coming through. Warming, but not, it doesn't get, even get as warm as this one. A little warming, starts feeling, it's very silky and soft and elegant for the 21. Pipe tobacco old leather they start driving down little cocoa powder dryness again there is a little bit of a roasted sweet nut element in with that barrel char that kind of smoky lightly smoky barrel char tone driving down with that pipe tobacco on that old leather little cocoa powder in there Wow, the finish much longer here than even here. As great as this one was, this one's a little better on the finish. Yeah, that's, yeah. Very solid Irish whiskey. The whole line, to be honest. Um, I'm a fan of each and every one of these for different occasions. This one, while it has a lot going on, it's not as as bold as I would say this one is. You know, this one has a lot of flavor, um, but this one has a little more boldness to the flavor here. Um, this one's more elegant. And then this one over here is a lot brighter, uh, more orchard fruits almost, more uh, vibrancy with the floralness. Ugh. But it still has that really rich tobacco and leather tone. And that barrel char. Ugh. Okay, so that's what I have to say about these. You know, each and every one of these gets chill filtered. Uh, they are all bottled at 80 proof, so they all share that in common. Started out as the same distillate. Uh, but some things that I heard during that tasting that was kind of surprising was that they actually had some pours for us that were single casks, unchill filtered, finished in specialty casks. And I'm actually going to be reviewing this one over on my patreon channel next because this bottle was bottled i believe it was around 08 when this came out for the 400th anniversary uh, but uh, the bushmill 1608 uses crystal malt and crystal malt is pretty unique in the sense that uh, basically what they're doing is they're taking the uh, the malted barley and they're taking it up to a very high heat to almost liquefy uh, the carbohydrates and starches. And then they do it through a very quick cooling process to kind of crystallize that. And so when you look at regular malted barley, it'll kind of look, when you break it open, it looks white on the inside. When you look at crystal malt, it's gonna look black. And so it imparts a different flavor profile with it. And I also couldn't review that one over here simply because that one does have some grain whiskey involved. But the reason I'm gonna review that over at Patreon is because that kind of is a little cue, a little hint on, I think of some things to come from Bushmills that might include that um, and a few other things. So join us over at uh, patreon.com slash liquorhound. Check out that video and all my others. I'm doing a video a week over there. Uh, become a subscriber on Patreon over there. But of course, if you can't, totally understandable. Keep, you know, visiting me here. Subscribe here on YouTube. I really enjoy all the great comments I get. So keep leaving those and I'll get to them just as soon as I can. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you all for watching. Have a great evening and cheers.